Welcome to Before the Council, a reading of the Revere City Council agenda. For the meeting of Monday, July 13th, 2015, there are 21 items on the agenda this week. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. with the Zoning Subcommittee, chaired by Councilor Stephen F. Reardon. Along with Councilor Reardon, Councilor Arthur F. Guanasso, Councilor Ira Novoselsky, and Councilor Anthony T. Zambudo are on the committee. They will consider the following applications. One, pursuant to Council Order C-15-02, Oxford Airport Technical Services of Elmont, New York, is seeking permission from the Revere City Council to convert one non-conforming use, a contractor storage yard, to another non-conforming use, maintenance and repair facility at number 885 North Shore Road. Two, pursuant to Council Order C-15-03, Angelica Cardona Ramirez of Revere, Massachusetts, is seeking permission from the Revere City Council to convert one non-conforming use, medical, to another non-conforming use, a coffee shop, on PT Lots 74 and 76 and Centennial Avenue at 1 through 4 Orr Square. Third, pursuant to Council Order 15-04, 1141 Revere Beach Parkway Realty, LLC, of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is seeking permission from the Revere City Council to operate a fast food takeout drive-in restaurant, a car wash, and for the use of the existing non-conforming rooftop sign on lots 1 and 4 at 1141 Revere Beach Parkway. And 4, pursuant to Council Order C-15-05, Mr. Peter Lutanzi, Jr., trustee, LL. Realty Trust of Revere, Massachusetts is seeking permission from the Revere City Council to construct a one-story rear addition for the expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use, a professional office, within the RB District on lot number 22 at number 166 Winthrop Avenue in Revere, Massachusetts. At 5 p.m., we move on to the Public Works Subcommittee chaired by Councilor Ira Novoselsky. Also on the committee, Councilor Arthur Guanasso, Councilor Charles J. Patch Sr., and Councilor Stephen Reardon. The committee will discuss the following items. One, winter parking and snow removal plan, and two, an update on potholes. At 6 p.m., we move on to the Revere City Council meeting, which begins with a salute to the flag, the roll call of members, and the approval of the journal of the meeting held on June 22nd, 2015. Then it's on to calendar item number one. Pursuant to Council Order 12-022, this will be a joint utility companies meeting. They will appear to discuss the ongoing utility work within the city of Revere. Calendar item number two. The Department of Healthy Community Initiatives, along with Revere Cares, will address the City Council on the opioid crisis, prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery process. Calendar item number three, under unfinished business, pursuant to Council Order 15-149, a motion of reconsideration filed by Councilor Zambudo relative to the Verizon petition for a joint poll location on Ward Street. Then it's on to committee reports. Calendar item number four is the zoning subcommittee report. And calendar item number five is the public works subcommittee report. Calendar item number six is a communication from the mayor relative to the capital improvement plan. And it is dated June 24th, 2015. Dear council members, we would like to present the new capital improvement plan to the City Council at the meeting scheduled for Monday, August 24th. Department heads across city government have been working with the team at the Edward J. Collins Center for Public Management at the University of Massachusetts for the past year on the project, and we are excited to present the new updated plan. Please advise if this is possible. Very truly yours, Dan Rizzo, 
mayor of the city of Revere. Calendar item number seven. This is a communication from the mayor requesting a revolving account for the dog park dated June 29th, 2015. Dear City Council, I am writing to request that the City Council request that the auditor set up a revolving account for the dog park funds. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo. Mayor, calendar item number eight. Pursuant to Council Order C-15-02, this is a communication from Site Plan Review relative to findings, conditions, and recommendations for number 885 North Shore Road, which was discussed at the Zoning Committee meeting that began at 4 p.m. This is dated June 24th, 2015. Please be advised that the Site Plan Committee has reviewed the above reference site plan for the conversion of a non-conforming use, a contractor's storage yard, to another non-conforming use, maintenance and repair facility at number 885 North Shore Road. The following findings and conditions have been made with respect to this site plan. One, the parking lot shall be striped with clear pavement markings for parking spaces 9 feet by 18 feet, and access and egress markings in accordance with a plan to be approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. Two, there shall be no outdoor storage of materials or equipment, unregistered vehicles, or vehicles under repair. Three, the existing standing accessory signs shall be removed, and all future signage shall be approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. Calendar item number nine. Pursuant to Council Order C-15-03, another item from the Zoning Subcommittee. This is a communication from Site Plan Review relative to findings, conditions, and recommendations for 1 through 4 or square. Dated June 24th, 2015, please be advised that the Site Plan Review Committee has reviewed the above reference site plan for the conversion of a medical office to a coffee shop within a non-conforming structure at 1 through 4 or square. The following findings and conditions have been made with respect to this site plan. 1. The plans shall be reviewed and approved by the Fire Department and the Board of Health. 2. The building shall be made compliant with ADA standards. Calendar item number 10. This is a communication based on C-15-04 from the Site Plan Review relative to findings and conditions and recommendations for 1141 Revere Beach Parkway, once again from the Zoning Subcommittee, dated June 23rd, 2015. Please be advised that the Site Plan Review Committee has reviewed the above reference site plan for the operation of a fast food takeout drive-in restaurant and a car wash and for the use of the existing non-conforming rooftop sign on lots 1 and 4 at 1141 Revere Beach Parkway. The following findings and conditions have been made with respect to this site plan. 1. A street and sidewalk bond must be placed on file with the Department of Public Works to secure performance for the installation of utilities, construction of concrete sidewalks and granite curbing, construction of driveways, construction of retaining walls, if applicable, and landscaping with respect to the operation of a fast food takeout drive-in restaurant and car wash at number 1141 Revere Beach Parkway. Two, the final plans must be reviewed and approved by the fire department. Three, the parking lot shall be paved and striped with clear pavement markings for traffic flow. Four, The proponent shall secure a curb cut permit and comply with access and egress design standards from Mass DOT and DCR for safe access and egress onto Revere Beach Parkway. Five, a sewer connection and water connection permit must be obtained for the Department of Public Works and Engineering Department for all new services into the building. Six, Stormwater management and drainage plans shall be submitted to and approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. Seven, all walkways within the site shall be concrete, and all curbing shall be either precast concrete or granite. Eight, a landscaping plan shall be approved by Site Plan Review Committee, which shall include landscape buffer and screening areas between abutting residential properties and the site, 
as well as interior landscaped islands and landscaping along the full frontage of the site. Nine, all drive-through aisles and stacking lanes shall not conflict with proposed parking spaces and the flow of interior traffic. Ten, the exterior facade of the building shall be approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. And eleven, a final as-built plan and landscaping plan must be filed with the city engineer and building inspector prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Calendar item number 11. Once again, coming out of the zoning subcommittee, pursuant to Council Order C-15-05, this is a communication from Site Plan Review relative to findings, conditions, and recommendations for number 166 Winthrop Avenue, dated June 23rd, 2015, please be advised that the Site Plan Review Committee has reviewed the above reference site plan for the construction of a one-story rear addition for the expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use, a professional office, within the RB District. The following findings and conditions have been made with respect to this site plan. One, the final building plans must be reviewed and approved by the Fire Department. Two, there shall be 11 on-site parking spaces provided that they are striped. And three, there shall be a landscape buffer zone provided on all sides of the parking lot in accordance with screening standards provided by the Site Plan Review Committee. Calendar item number 12. This is a communication from the Mayor relative to the appointment of PG Construction Incorporated as a licensed drain layer, and it's dated July 1st, 2015. Dear Council Members, please be advised that in accordance with the provisions of Title 13, Chapter 13.08, Section 13.08.435 of the revised ordinances of the City of Revere as most recently amended, I hereby request that PG Construction Incorporated of Quincy, Massachusetts be appointed as a licensed drain layer. Please take careful notice that all drain layer licenses expire on April 1st annually, unless sooner revoked by the mayor and the council. Mr. Gary Gasikia has been advised that he will be contacted directly by the appointments subcommittee with a date and time to appear before them concerning this appointment. Calendar item number 13. This is a communication from the mayor relative to transfer requests to and from various accounts. It's dated July 6th, 2015. Dear Honorable City Council, I am requesting from your Honorable Body the approval of transfers to cover deficits from appropriated accounts that are projected to have surplus balances at the end of fiscal year 2015. These monies will be necessary to fund the shortfall in the accounts listed on the attached pages within this transmittal. The City Auditor has verified the availability of funds included in this request. Beginning with the accounts that are in the need of transfers to cover deficits, per special legislation approved by the City Council, the widow of Council Penta was paid a full annual salary through December 31, 2015, resulting in a deficit. Insurance premiums for property, vehicle, educators, legal, and public officials' insurance for the City are estimated each year with input from the agent, Although this can vary based on many factors, over the past couple of fiscal years, as a result of extraordinary casualties and higher than usual incidences, our rates have been higher than the anticipated. In addition, due to rounding and the additional day in February, a permanent salary deficit resulted and salary overtime is higher due to required special projects, redesign of budget for GFOA designation, grant reporting requirements, RevStat projects, and additional department coordination demands. Postage deficit is due to postage increases and new departmental violation and billing requirements. Accessors permanent salaries deficit is a result of 25-year step increases not originally projected and the additional day in February. The Treasurer's workers' compensation medical expenditures are estimated at the time the budget is prepared and submitted to the Council for approval. In fiscal year 2015, these expenses were higher than anticipated 
given the number of unforeseen injuries within various departments. Salary overtime is higher due to the update of Govern, implementation of the new 40U, and other special projects. Notes and bonds and banking service fees exceeded projections due to refunding of loans. The release settlement account is short as a result of eminent domain land taking cost exceeding the amount originally bonded. The election had some small overages in costs for equipment rental and postage. This happens on occasion, but that can be covered by an account with a surplus. The engineering department need of additional equipment to perform necessary tasks as a result of reclassification of expenses originally projected. The fire department overtime is a result of variable staffing needs with the increase and decrease of staff based on retirements, injuries, and during FY 2015, the number of extraordinary challenges, including the devastating tornado and record-breaking snowfall. Salary accounts as a result of contractual agreements, timing of retirements, injuries, and or the need to fill in for position at a higher level will cause deficits during the year. Medical expenses were higher than usual due to unanticipated surgeries and other medical procedures. Additionally, the fire automotive account is in deficit due to necessary repairs to aging equipment. The police overtime is higher this year due to a number of unanticipated staffing injuries, increased citywide community events, training needs, and during FY 2015, a number of extraordinary challenges, including the devastating tornado and record-breaking snowfall. Salary accounts as a result of contractual agreements, timing of retirements, injuries, and or need to fill in for a position at higher level will cause deficits during the year. Medical expenses were higher than usual due to unanticipated surgeries and other medical procedures. The building department permanent salaries is a result of an additional day in February and the retirement of an electrical inspector. The DPW, as a result of a number of position reclassifications and departmental changes within departments, as a result of a number of staff disabilities, both short and long term, and a year filled with devastating natural events such as the tornado and record-breaking snowfall. The accounts with excesses as a result of transfers are available to cover some of these costs with the expectation that a certain percentage will be covered by FEMA and or other funding sources. Additionally, as a result, building and equipment maintenance and repair expenses were higher. Also, as a result of an increase in the minimum wage, the DPW Senior Citizens Park Maintenance Program has resulted in a deficit. Water Sewer Enterprise Fund Sewer Division Labor Force Overtime and Longevity is projected to be in deficit due to position reclassifications and a number of extraordinary breaks which have occurred during the fiscal year. Water Sewer Enterprise Fund Water Division Labor Force Overtime is projected to be in deficit due to a number of extraordinary breaks that have occurred during the fiscal year and the creation of a new position Class 4 water distribution operator imposed on the city of Revere. Water Sewer Enterprise Fund Water Billing Division Labor Force Overtime is projected to be in deficit due to the Govern software update, new water meter installation and training. The permanent salary deficit is a result of the creation of a new position necessary to maintain the technology changes. The accounts with projected surpluses are as follows. The resulting surplus in fire payroll accounts are attributed to the delay in replacing retiring personnel and those out with injuries resulting in disability payments. The surpluses of the Director of Finance Treasurer Collector accounts are attributable to lower than projected workers' comp payroll due to negotiated settlements and the fact that personnel injuries vary from year to year. Bonded debt surplus is a timing difference. The election department surplus can vary from year to year based on reimbursements provided by the state, the number of elections, 
and or the availability of temporary staffing along with other factors. The solicitor's litigation expenses and outside legal expenses vary from year to year based on a number of factors such as the complexity of a case or the willingness of parties to settle. Police department surpluses can be attributed to the timing in the hiring of new police officers and a number of unanticipated disability injuries as well as the needs within the department which varies with regards to costs that support the operations of the police department as a result of delayed hiring and or unanticipated retirements, these surpluses are available to cover overtime deficits. Due to a delay in the opening, most of the regional call center appropriated funds remain unused and available to cover other unexpected deficits. Many DPW expense accounts, such as rubbish disposal, street sweeping, utilities, and gas and oil are essentially variably fixed costs determined by changing market rates and weather conditions, to name a few. Most accounts are set by contract but can result in fluctuations causing deficits or, in this year, surpluses. The identified surplus in the Council on Elder Affairs is a result of an extended absence due to a medical leave. The Veterans Affairs benefits vary based on need and number of eligible participants of the program. These benefits were lower this year than originally anticipated. The permanent salary surplus resulted from an extended illness of one of the department's part-time employees. The water sewer enterprise fund surpluses are the result of disability injuries and unfilled positions for employees out on disability in both the sewer and water divisions and delayed filling of available positions. Finally, there are other additional deficits that have been identified specifically in the DPW snow removal private contractor accounts. It is anticipated that these deficits will be covered in combination as charges on the FY2016 dash FY16 recap and or through partial reimbursements anticipated to be received from FEMA. I am respectfully requesting transfers as identified by the City Auditor's verification of funds. It is of the utmost importance that these transfers are voted on favorably by July 15, 2015, as allowed by Massachusetts general laws. A favorable vote will ensure that the end of fiscal year financial statements of the city will not reflect any deficits. Sincerely, Mayor Daniel Rizzo. Calendar item number 14. This is a communication from the mayor relative to appointments to the Historical Commission. Dated June 29, 2015. Dear City Council, I am writing to request that the City Council consider the following appointments and reappointments to the Library Board of Trustees, all revere reappointments, Mr. Mark Ferranti, Mr. Paul Ring, Ms. Maria Yolanda Napolitano, Ms. Darlene Camerata, and Ms. Maria Elena Hinojosa. To the Library Board of Trustees, the appointment of Mr. Robert Tatel of Revere, Massachusetts, and to the Historical Commission, the appointment of Mr. William Reedy of Revere, Massachusetts. Thank you for your courtesy and cooperation. Very truly yours, Daniel Rizzo, Mayor. Calendar item number 15. This is a communication from Mr. Nicholas Bua relative to requesting a memorial square to be designated for Mr. Dominic Russo in the area of Stowers and Revere Streets. It's dated July 8, 2015, dear Council President. I am requesting on behalf of the family of Mr. Dominic S. Russo a memorial square sign to be installed in the area of Stowers Street and Revere Street. Mr. Russo was born on June 25, 1919 in Chelsea, and at an early age his family moved to Revere. At the age of 22, Dominic enlisted in the Army 
serving in the Solomon Islands, the Philippines, and Guadalcanal, where he received numerous decorations for his bravery. He was the recipient of the Bronze Star, the Asian Pacific Theater Campaign Ribbon, the Philippine Liberation Ribbon, to name a few. I have a copy of Mr. Russo's separation papers on file in my office. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Nicholas Bua, the Director of Revere Veterans Services. Calendar item number 16, pursuant to Council Order 15-155. This is a motion presented by Council of Powers that the City Council go on record as supporting House Bills 770 and 771 as submitted by Representative Rosalie Vincent. Calendar item number 17. Pursuant to Council Order 15-156, this is a motion presented by Councilor Arrigo. That the City Council presents certificates of commendation to the Revere Youth Baseball and Softball Championship teams. Calendar item number 18, pursuant to Council Order 15-157, this is a motion presented by Council of Powers that the City Council present a certificate of commendation to Mr. Jim Cunningham upon his retirement from the Chelsea Revere Winthrop Elder Services. For 39 years, Jim has provided elderly services to countless senior citizens in the area. Calendar item number 19, pursuant to Council Order 15-158, this is a motion presented by Councilor Reardon that the Director of Inspectional Services be requested to appear before the City Council to discuss the severe rodent situation infesting the city and what can be done about the problem. Calendar item number 20, pursuant to Council Order 15-159, this is a motion presented by Councilor Reardon that the Mayor request the Traffic Commission to hold a public hearing on the implementation of residential parking on Prospect Avenue, Ridge Road, and Suffolk Avenue. And calendar item number 21, pursuant to Council Order 15-160, this is a motion presented by Councilor Reardon that the Mayor consider the hiring of an independent hydrologist to investigate the source of water that wells up from below the surfaces on the Reservoir Avenue Hill area bounded by Park Avenue and Fenno Street, one example of this problem being the constant flow of water onto Fenno Street near the Borden Street intersection. And this has been before the Council, a reading of the Revere City Council agenda for the meeting of July 13, 2015. I'm Rick Promise, and I'll see you at the Council.